And welcome back, everybody, to your favorite show, the Inland Sports Show here at Teen Vision TV 16. Joining us here on the show, he, he made it. It's the head coach of the Lancers, Rick Croy. And coach, I cannot believe it's almost time for college basketball right around the corner. I know you guys just had a, a scrimmage this past Saturday, inter squad scrimmage. Um, what did you like about the scrimmage, about competing against one another and kind of get those juices flowing for the season? Yeah, well, thanks for having me, Pep. It was a, it was a great run. Uh, Saturday, blue-white game, kind of our first time doing it. Great chance for our community to get a look at our new guys yeah. and the returners. I mean, it's been a while since we've been out there. And I love the depth on our team. Um, I love the joy that's in the gym. I love the work ethic. So uh, it's been fun. The guys, are they're ready now to go compete <laughs> against somebody else. I mean, we've been at it for a while. But um, blue-white scrimmage was great for our community and for our team. So it's a, a unofficial start to the college basketball season. I know not this Friday, but the following Friday, you have Midnight Madness, which, yeah. which if you haven't seen the video, it's nuts. It's bananas. And, in, you know, the CBU faithful, they, they love it. Um, that Midnight Madness event, does that kind of get you guys even more excited, make the season feel more real and kind of get the, you know, the energy pumped up on campus for the season? Yeah, it's an incredible tradition at CBU. Uh, the university goes all out. Uh, student services, uh, our athletic department, um, the, the entire school gets gets behind it and it's great for both programs women's and men's and uh, it does get you ready it makes it feel like it's here yeah uh, but it's a great way for everyone to connect and you know there's so much going on in the fall semester but it definitely signifies all right basketball season is right around the corner and uh, our guys are looking forward to it I know that well, Coach, I, I probably buried the lead here. I got some notes on here, but I probably buried the lead on this. The fact that you guys are eligible for the NCAA yeah. tournament this, this season, the big dance, uh, if you can obviously win the WAC. Um, how exciting is that, just knowing that you, those goals are available for this team going into the year? Yeah, it's great. You know, I think the transition, uh, we, we found a lot of great moments in, in the transition and uh, very proud of, of the guys, um, you know, just the way they, they handled that kind of that caveat hanging there that, you know, that, that the NCAA puts in place. And I think our guys did it with great spirit, great attitudes. Uh, where, where it helps the most is recruiting, yeah. you know, to, to not have that um, as a factor moving forward. And, you know, our guys know if they compete well, then they've got the same opportunity that most teams in the NCAA have. And, and our guys know, I mean, we've got great experience on our team. At the end of the day, you got to go play well in March. Yeah. if you want to have a chance to play in that tournament. So that's what it's all about. That's what all our training has been about, is to put us ourselves in position to keep getting better the entire way. And, uh, you know, it's a long haul. As you know, basketball season is it, – it's a long journey. So you got to have maturity. you got to have leadership. you got to have, you know, real strength and conviction in your locker room. And, and you got to work through some stuff. So we haven't had any adversity yet. You know, knock on wood, our guys are – uh, are, are healthy and, and really working at it. But we know there'll be some bumps along the way, and I think ultimately it's how you handle those. You know, to, to get ready for March, obviously you've got a, another great non-conference schedule, and at least in my estimate, maybe the most challenging you've had it since yeah. you've been Division I. Um, I saw what, what Washington was on there, Minnesota was on there. When you build that non-conference schedule, is it with, with the WAC in mind and maybe seeing different variety of teams to prepare you for the different teams you'll see in the WAC? You maybe tall teams, small teams, you know, up and down teams, slow teams? Yeah, two, two things with the schedule. One, we felt like we had the group that yeah. was ready to step into this challenge. And then the second thing being that the WAC has jumped. You know, the WAC has uh, significantly improved uh, since we finished in second place in, in 1920. Uh, added some, some really strong basketball programs, and they've enhanced uh, the conference. And, you know, so we want to prepare ourselves, you know, for the battles ahead in, in the Western Athletic Conference. And, um, you know, the conference is now the 13th best. Ken Palm's ranked it as the 13th best conference in the country mm -hmm. uh, going into the season. So it's full of challenges, difficult places to play, tough road trips. Uh, so our guys are excited about that. We wanted our non-conference schedule to reflect our preparation. You know, Coach, uh, you mentioned like tough places to play and the, those other conference teams that you're going to see. I feel like there's always, you know, some power five guys that show up in the WAC. You know, they transfer to a, you know, a, a school in the WAC. And so there's like great, there's great players in the WAC. I don't know if you guys have been out to a game, but like there's some, some fantastic players 
at CBU and also in the WAC. So when you go up against some of these other schools, I mean, it's not like you're going up against some guys that, you, you know, you've never heard of. I mean, probably maybe guys that you recruited as well. Like, I mean, there's some legit talent in the WAC. Yeah. And in college basketball now, uh, you know, especially in our conference, you're going to play against – for the most part, guys 21, 22, 23 years old yeah. that have experience in college basketball. And, you know, our, our roster reflects that, that same thing. And in the transfer portal nowadays, yeah, you're going to play uh, against guys that, that may be at their second or third school. And, and the key in all that is, you know, in your recruiting, are you getting the guys that are best for your program? Mm -hmm. And we feel we did that in the portal, and we're excited to compete with these guys. All right, speaking of your guys, uh, are you a, a big paintball guy? I saw you guys went paintballing. I'm a novice, <laughs> novice paintballer. I do enjoy it. Uh, we had a great time um, out there in Lake Elsinore. But how, how important are things like that? Just those, you know, what do they call them? Team bonding, you know, right? You go out and you do something that's not basketball. You know, you go, I know you guys go to the beach a lot, do paintball. Like, what else do you guys do to kind of bring that team together? Yeah, we, we, we do a lot of stuff. I mean, the thing we do most often is break bread. I mean, we're a, we're a, a team that eats well, uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, we enjoy sharing that fellowship together. And, you know, we're very blessed um, at CBU by the commitment made to athletics by our president, Dr. Ron Ellis. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a first-class experience for our guys. But, you know, these guys show up oftentimes midway through June, July. It's a longer haul now, uh, the preparation, uh, the competition ahead. So you got to break it up. And uh, we try and do as many things as we can to grow off the floor. Some of them fun, and then some of them, you know, are very developmental. We'll bring in uh, different speakers uh, from different uh, arenas professionally to mm -hmm. speak truth into our guys' lives so they can keep growing as people. And we try and do that weekly. Uh, so it's not just all basketball, all academics. We want them to grow in other areas as well. And, and we enjoy that part of it. You know, that's, those, are, those are some of the best parts about coaching is watching these guys move on and, uh, you know, succeed professionally. And then they come back and they're very proud of the program. And we, we've got a great alumni base. It's our 10th year here at CBU now. And we had great alums prior to me arriving at CBU mm -hmm. that are very proud of, of the program. And we have, you know, we have to work hard to honor those that have come before us and built a great uh, tradition athletically at CBU. But, you know, the guys that we've been competing with over the last nine years, they're uh, they're, they're hungry for success, and, and, and the program means a lot to them. You know, Coach, uh, you lost a great leader in Tyrell. He was, mm -hmm. uh, you know, an all-time Lancer. But you've got the Armstrong brothers back. Obviously, Taryn is terrific, and, and Trey is, as well. Reed Nottage. But you've, you've got kind of that nucleus, and I'm Jelani Stone. I'm probably leaving some guys out, but you've got a, a strong nucleus. But who are some of the new guys that we're going to be talking about this season for CBU? Yeah, um, we, we got five guys out of the transfer portal. We feel like all five are great fits. Joe Quintana led the WCC in three-point shooting mm -hmm. last year from Loyola Marymount University. Uh, Riley Batten is a, a Southern California kid. He was at the University of Utah, and uh, we're extremely excited that he's a Lancer. And that's, that's the big thing. You know, I was telling somebody the other day that, uh, you know, the, these guys, they're, they're transfers, and people are going to talk about the portal and this and that. But... They put in a lot of work at CBU, and they're Lancers, and they're our guys, and, and they're going to be that forever moving forward. So Blondo Chiqueno from New Hampshire. I think you nailed it. Yeah, <laughs> I feel good about it. I have a few reps, but, uh, you know, he'll probably tell me I missed something. Yeah. But he's a, he's a great leader, mm -hmm. um, you know, incredible character, and, and he's going to really help us in the backcourt. Um, and then Hunter Goodrick from South Dakota, one of the most versatile players that we've had. He's, he's an Australian out of Sydney. Uh, very versatile, very tough, rugged, and combines that with a nice skill level. And he's an improving player. I mean, I think he's going to keep getting better the entire season. And then Tim Ego F.A. from Georgetown um, by way of Nigeria and the NBA Academy, 6'11", massive wingspan, uh, great smile, great attitude. And, uh, you know, we're excited to, uh, to, to mesh all these guys together. And Scotty Washington redshirted for us last year. Um, along with Keanu Rasmussen, also out of Australia. So there are a lot of new parts, but we also return some great experience and leadership. Reed Nottage, yeah. Malik Wade, uh, all these guys have experience. And, and they're, they know in, in our conference, depth matters. And you've got to have a lot of good players, and guys have to support each other, and guys are going to have to step up at different times throughout the season. So uh, they've got a good feel for that, and they're coming together.
You know, talking about coming together and, and meshing, you mentioned that when you go recruit guys, you got to recruit the right guys because you want to bring in guys that are going to complement, you know, in the core, the guys that yeah. you have. So whether it's the transfer, whether it's freshmen, are you, are you excited about the way they are meshing right now with the season just a couple weeks away now? Yeah, very much. You know, and that starts in the summer. Uh, we've got some unique opportunities for that. We've got great basketball camps in the summer where we're, we're able to pour into the community and our guys get some role modeling opportunities. And then we kind of ramp it up about midway through July. We start training. We've got an incredible strength coach in Michael Robinson, and he leads the charge in that in July. I mean, the first thing we start doing is, is working on guys' bodies and making sure they're physically prepared uh, for the task ahead with – you know, the preseason and then the non-conference schedule and then ultimately getting into the whack with the heavy travel. So yeah. it's important that our guys get stronger and, and their fitness is, is right where it needs to be. And he's done an outstanding job with that. And then, you know, you get into practice and iron sharpens iron. Yeah. And you're hoping that these guys love competing against each other. And we found out that our group does. Well, listen, I know you, you love competition, but sometimes you have to Tell your guys, hey, let, let's let's dial it down just a little bit in practice. Like we're all on the same team here. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. And, and yesterday was probably the first day uh, where I felt like, okay, these guys are they're all ready to play against yeah. a different university, a different program. <laughs> uh, you you could feel it. It's it's we've been at it for some time, and they've been great. They've been going after each other with great respect and, and, and appreciation for. Uh, the skill and the toughness on the floor, but there's there's no doubt about it. Ultimately, it all culminates in, in going against somebody else and, and pulling together. All right, so Monday, November 7th, opening night, College Hoops. Yeah. You guys are home against Long Beach State. What, what are you hoping to see from your team on that opening night? Great effort. Yeah. Uh, you know, a, a connected team offensively uh, that's able to play you know, off feel and, and really read each other off the off on the offensive side of the floor. And then, and then defensively, tremendous effort, um, great teamwork, and then a lot of resolve because, again, our conference, our non-conference schedule, we've, we've stepped it up. So, you know, like on opening night, we're playing Long Beach State, Big West champions last year. Yeah. Uh, they've got a senior-laden, experienced team. They're going to bring it. You know, it's not like I think we're going to have a great crowd that night. We hope to sell out the CBU Event Center. We want to invite the entire community out. But that alone is not going to do it. You know, we've got to put forth a great effort. We've got to play a full 40 minutes. And those are the games that we want to be in and, and ultimately win. All right, finally, Coach, uh, you know, I had the chance to, to see you at the River Valley League Sportsmanship Symposium uh, last week. Was it last week? Yeah, it feels like so long yeah. ago at Norda Vista High School. And, uh, and you spoke on the difference between – losing and getting beat and I think it, it really resonated with a lot of the the student athletes that were there from the River Valley League can you you know for the folks watching can you kind of describe what's the difference between losing a game and getting beat yeah we try and teach that that's one of the one of the things that we'll step off the floor and spend some time talking about because I think it applies to life as well but mm -hmm. you know in in terms of basketball um, if we're using that as, as an analogy um, or a metaphor, there are going to be times where you are well prepared, you compete with great effort, everyone pours in, it's, it's, a, it's a selfless effort, everyone's united, everyone's going after the same mission, and on that given night, the opponent's a little bit better. You know, the ball goes in more often, um, maybe they get the breaks, um, and on that particular night, I would define that as getting beat, mm -hmm. you know, and, and in our program, one of the things we talk about is controlling the controllables. And when we do that, and if we get beat, it's time to recalibrate and then attack again. What we don't want to do is lose and, and lose is losing is you weren't prepared. You took something for granted. Um, you weren't connected. You know, there was some kind of interference in your preparation or in your effort during the competition. Uh, maybe something knocked you off, uh, off balance, uh, something externally yeah. uh, played a factor, um, or the other team just flat out out-competed you. And, and we don't want that to ever be acceptable. You know? and, and on that, a, a night like that, um, we want those to be few and far between. The goal is never. You know, we don't want to ever lose. And, and we'll kind of apply that you know, that mantra, that belief to life, yeah. you know, and we feel like that's what CBU is all about. Live your purpose, go after it, 
build upon your strengths, attack your weaknesses, uh, continue to learn about yourself, uh, learn about God, and, and go out and compete well and, and represent your family, represent CBU. And, and so we try and tie it all together. You know, Coach, uh, we, we've had some other coaches, high school football coaches and whatnot, and, you know, I'll say, man, you know, you guys were playing so well, and then you just kind of had an off night, and they're like, hey, our guys are human. They, they've got girlfriends. They've got midterms. They've got hard classes. They're staying up late studying. Like, they've got all this stuff, you know, beyond the court or beyond the football field that they're having to negotiate with. Um, like you just mentioned, how do you kind of recalibrate? How do you, how do you, you know, get your guys dialed in? Maybe after a tough loss uh, or a getting beat uh, in this case, how do you get them just dialed in and focused once again to kind of continue the course? Well, we talk a lot about perspective. You know, our, our president, um, Dr. Ellis, has a great saying. He always says, you got to know when you got it made. And we try and remind our guys. And to me, that saying, that mantra is about perspective. And these guys are healthy, right? And so to take a step back and say, this is an amazing time in their lives, in our lives, to be able to compete at the college level, represent a university, be well supported. No matter what happens, we got it made. Now, obviously, we're on a mission, yeah. and we got some things that we want to achieve. So let's take a step back, gain perspective, recalibrate. Let's do it together. I mean, it's the ultimate team sport. And we try and do that uh, when need be, but we try and do it often. All right, so if you're a Lancer fan, again, October 28th, it was a Friday night. That's Midnight Madness, Madness at the CBU Event Center. And then November 7th, that's opening night in college basketball. The Lancers home against Long Beach State. Coach, always appreciate the time. Yep, thank you. Lance up. That is head coach Rick Croy here on the Inland Sports Show. We always appreciate the time. Much more on the Lancers throughout the college basketball season right here on the Inland Sports Show. Big shout out to our director, Johnny Nunez, behind the scenes here at Team Vision TV 16. My name is Pep Fernandez. God bless you. Stay safe out there, and we'll see you next time. Inland Sports.